Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience and those tuning in online worldwide. Thanks to our friends at Our Radio. We're glad you all could be with us as well. I'm excited to welcome Todd Dresner to our program today. Todd is a filmmaker who's been able to share some great stories through film. His newest documentary is called The Campaign of Minor Bow. We'll talk to Todd not only about the new project, but also what it's been like for him to see the early response to it and what he hopes you're able to take away from it and his journey with it as well. Todd, thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for having me. Well, the pleasure's definitely all mine. We're going to get into, of course, the the new project, the Campaign of Minor Bow, here in a bit, but I want to talk about this experience for you. I mean, what has it been like for you through film to be able to share these stories? Well, uh, I tend to try to make films about something that uh, I don't quite understand or something going on in the world that uh, I want to know more about. My first documentary was about autism, which I made after my son was diagnosed on the autism spectrum. And this new one uh, is about an unemployed coal miner who runs for U.S. Senate in West Virginia. And uh, I live in Brooklyn, New York. I have never been to West Virginia. Uh, Bo Copley, the main character, is very different from from me. And so uh, any documentary project, it's not easy to make a documentary film. So you have to choose a subject that you're going to stay engaged in. And so for me, it often works to find something I'm thinking about or interested in or want to know more about and and that keeps me going through the project. Yeah. And and I think, too, I, and I appreciate you sharing that. I think the other great thing is, Todd, is that you, not only, of course, are these things that you are interested in, but there's also it shows that there's an audience for it as well. So I want to ask you about that aspect. When did you realize, because even before you were making your own films, I noticed when I was prepping for this segment, you, of course, had done other work on other projects. What was it about storytelling that made you say, this is something I want to do? Well, there is that old saying that uh, the truth is stranger than fiction, which I think, particularly right now, has never been more apt. And <laughs> it, it, it's a little bit of a, a stereotype to say that everybody has a story, but it is is the case. And yeah. so, you know, I, I've met people and gone to places that I would not have met and not have gone if I wasn't a filmmaker. And that in addition to the aspect of just being able to bring out a film and have people see it, you know, you want to get something out of the experience of making it yourself, no matter what happens to it afterwards. So uh, I think storytelling and getting to know people across differences is an important thing for all of us to do, especially right now. So I think there's value in that. Yeah. Well, I think that that is, that is definitely so interesting. This film, like some of your other work, uh, Todd, I mean, I was able to see it thanks to our friends at, at, at Amazon. It's available on, on Prime Video. People can watch it there. They can either rent or buy it there. Has that kind of sunk in for you that you are doing that thing that so many people just talk about? You not only are creating these projects, but literally able to share them with the world. Yeah, I mean, if I if I sit back and think about it, it's... Uh, can be hard to believe, um, you know, at the same time, the the cost of entry into making a documentary or making any film, documentary or otherwise, has come way down. Uh, this yeah. film was not entirely, but mostly edited on a laptop, and the cost of the equipment and the editing software and all of that is way down. So that's a good and a bad thing because it means that anyone can do it, and it means that anyone can do it. Uh, I have a colleague who I worked with uh, for many years who was kind of a crusty old man who worked at the BBC, and he used to say that people think that making television is as easy as watching it. And you find that sometimes uh, it's one thing to pick up a camera and shoot something. It's another thing to put together a story. And I'm not claiming that I'm the best at it or an expert by any means, but I think over the years I've learned a bit about how to do it, and it is it's an honor to be able to do that and to hopefully have people watch what I produce. Yeah. 
Do you find that a, a project like this, the campaign of Minor Bow Tide, also reminds us, even in the craziness of the world, that there are still things to, to make us smile, things to hope for, and things that keep us motivated, even when so many other things can beat us down? Yeah, uh, that was part of what drew me to it. I mean, the story is about a man who runs for a U.S. Senate, and it's an office that really he has no business running for in that he has no political experience and no money and no campaign stuff. Uh, so it's kind of an American dream type of story, whatever you think about his politics. Uh, I don't think there are a lot of other countries in the world where someone like him would think that he deserves to have a, a, an office as high as U.S. Senate and that he has a chance mm. to have it. And so in that sense, I, I found him kind of inspiring to take on this um, this campaign, even though the outside world was telling him it was a little crazy. And it's sort of an American dream story, which I think, especially with what's going on in the world right now, is a nice, refreshing change of pace. Yeah. So let's talk about the response. I mean, I know you know there are, are people out there. I'm not really sure, honestly, because um, I I didn't ask you this question before we begin the segment, uh, Todd. But I'm not really sure how you fall as far as as the critics and reviews. If that's something that you put a lot of weight into, but people are really enjoying this film. People are are doing exactly what what you and I are talking about here. They are reminded, I think, of what is possible. I noticed even the review that's on Amazon says, you know, it's one of those things that, that is inspiring. When you hear that or read that, does that make you feel as though you've done exactly what you wanted to do? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to try to uh, make a film, as I said, about someone very different from me and try to find some common ground between us, even though we disagree on many, many things. And... Mm -hmm. I think one thing I was very lucky about choosing Bill Copley to be the star of the film is that he comes across as so authentic and genuine and humble, which are not words that you often associate with politics. And so I think that it's a, a breath of fresh air to some extent for people to spend some time with him in this film and just see that there are still good people who are getting into politics for the right reason. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that we're suddenly all going to agree on everything and and we'll all know the right way forward. But I think it is a necessary first step for us to try to see across these differences and see the humanity in each other. And so to the extent that audiences react to that, I'm I'm very happy about that. I think that's definitely true. Uh, someone who definitely um, has uh, has quite a voice and an amplified presence, uh, especially on the airways, uh, both for radio and TV, is Van Jones. I noticed in September uh, his praise uh, for your film. I mean, when you when you saw that, what he had to say about, hey, no matter what your politics might be, this is worth your time. I mean, what was that like? Uh, that's great. I mean, uh, Van Jones uh, actually met. Bo Copley, the subject of my film, he did a news story in 2016 shortly after the election where he went down to West Virginia and talked to Bo and his wife and some other people about what their hopes were. And and Van does a lot of this kind of work that I've been talking about of trying to reach out across partisan lines and find common ground. So for him to endorse my film, which he's trying to do the same thing, is great to see and means a lot to me. Well, hey, it's one of those powerful things. I want to ask you about what you mentioned earlier about the cost of entry, Todd. I think that's an interesting point for aspiring uh, filmmakers out there and storytellers. But I want to first say for those who are just tuning in, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. I have the pleasure today of speaking with director Todd Dresner. We're talking to Todd not only about his love of storytelling through film, how he's been able to share some uh, powerful conversations through film, whether we're talking about, as you heard him say, his very first project with autism, his next one dealing with issues of race and other matters. And now, of course, uh, with the, the newest project uh, that's already getting a lot of buzz, as I said, I saw through Amazon uh, Prime Video, the campaign of Minor Bo, it is available now. Uh, we're talking to him about that journey. The cost of entry is something I think that does stop a lot of people um, or at least it's one of the things they say stops them. I, I think fear, to me, is one of the big things for a lot of people, Todd. I guess the, the obvious question would be, how did you get the courage to do it? Because there are so many people, there are so many talking heads out there, there are so many people who have opinions. How did you just make the decision to just go for this in the beginning? 
Uh, well, are you talking about this film in particular or, or documentary filmmaking in general? Yeah, documentary filmmaking, filmmaking in, in general. How did you get the courage just to say, I'm going to do this? Well, I was in um, film school. I went to film school after college and had always been interested in film. And the focus of film school was really on narrative fiction filmmaking. And I made a, a few short films and then uh, needed a way to pay the bills after that and started making corporate training and marketing videos, which I still do to pay the bills. But uh, people always said to me, oh, you should try a documentary. And uh, eventually I got some jobs editing other people's documentaries. And it was really um, when my son got diagnosed with autism that inspired me to make my own film. And, you know, the motivation was I wanted to meet and talk to people who were doing work about autism and talk to autistic adults and talk to parents and just get this wide angle view of autism at a time that it was more common in the culture than it had ever been before. And it just seemed like a way to do that would be to take the skills that I had and try to make my own film. And uh, anytime anyone starts a film, whether it's a fiction or a, a documentary, it's, it's a leap of faith. But uh, right. I think fortunately I had built up enough um, skills. I had done enough editing and writing uh, in my other work. My work was sort of adjacent to documentary that I was able to get that film finished. Um, there are other films that I've started that haven't been finished yet for one reason or another on the back burner. It's always, you sort of start over every time you make a new film. But um, by this point, I'm hopefully experienced enough that I can get a, a project off the ground and from start to finish. Well, I'm so glad that you did this one, and I know people feel the same about your your other work as well, uh, Todd. And I think, if nothing else, it not only reminds people of what is possible and what we can do, as in the case of the campaign of Minor Bow, but also when looking even at your own journey, what is possible and what we can do and who we can impact just by doing the thing that we're passionate about. Again, everyone, Todd Dresner has been our guest. He's the director behind the documentary, The Campaign of Minor Bow. Make sure you guys rent or buy it for yourselves through our friends at Amazon Prime Video. You guys can be able to watch it there or be able to own it yourself. And, Todd, how can our audience be able to stay connected with you? Well, you can uh, go to the website for the film, which is minorbowfilm.com. That will have your Amazon buying options and other uh, video-on-demand options. And you could sign up for the mailing list, which will keep you up to date on what's happening with this film and whatever projects I might do next. Well, Todd, congratulations to you again. Glad that our friends at October Coast connected us and looking forward to having you back on the program again. Uh, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Uh, thank you. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Let's make it a great one. Take care.